All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Bully Kid here checking in. You know what? On this video, I'm going to put this away because we're not going to be talking about turbochargers. Instead, we're going to be talking about the supercharged Civic SI 8th generation that we went to test drive. guys so we found an 8th gen Civic with aftermarket parts on it specifically a Rotrex supercharger made by Craftswork and we had to check it out we went to test drive it I'm gonna give you guys the rundown of the car the, the modifications that it had how much he was asking for and my personal feedback of driving this kind of vehicle with that kind of supercharger and those kind of mods and uh, yeah, enjoy the video. All right, some of you guys already know I am a big 8th gen fanatic. I think the chassis was excellent, the the interior was excellent, and the car did really good for that time period. And I always loved driving those things. The experience was awesome, but as you guys know, 200 horsepower is way underpowered, especially if you're talking about about 140 pound-feet of torque. So. We come up with a aftermarket supercharger that bolts right on to the 8th gen platform. Craftswork hooked it up, name brand, high quality, running about 6 to 8 pounds of boost I believe on these kits, creating anywhere from 300 to 350 wheel horsepower. You get to keep a catalytic converter if you want, you can keep your factory exhaust piping. It's a nice, easy installation of a supercharger kit because those engines the exhaust side is in the back of the motor where the whole cowl covers the back side of the motor and if you're trying to do anything turbo on the 8th gen civic you're just going to have a lot of nightmares running into plumbing problems and that's why people choose the supercharger route option great daily daily drivability low end torque from a supercharger compared to a turbocharger ease of installation and the list goes on so Let's see this car right here. This is how it looks like. It's a gray color, lowered on true hard suspension, aftermarket wheels. But the problem is when the gentleman came, the idle was already lumping. Blum, 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 like it's cammed, it's like it wants to die. You already know the car ain't running right with the blower. The car did come with a bunch of aftermarket supporting mods. It did have a low pressure fuel pump, which you obviously need. It did have aftermarket, I believe, 600cc fuel injectors, again, which you most definitely need. It did have an upgraded clutch, and the clutch felt pretty good compared to that turbo Subaru BRZ we test drove. The SI clutch was a lot lighter, but you could still feel it's not a factory clutch, and it grabbed great. Honestly, the SI feels way better than the Subaru BRZ I test drove just because it feels lighter, more agile the the connection with the gears is way better and the supercharger really opens this car up we test drove it it hauls ass brakes first second if you're power shifting into third you're gonna spin a little bit of third the power is definitely there but the first things that really really shocked me while test driving this car is one how freaking loud this thing is man this thing is so loud it, it just imagine being in a tin foil can with with everything rattling and whatnot. Very, very loud. And he did have a full header, cat back exhaust, probably non catted, I'm assuming. Very loud. Just talking to the gentleman that was selling the car, you do have to raise your voice just to hear him. That really threw me off, and you know what? I can't see myself driving a loud car like that whatsoever. So the next point that we noticed, because it's a supercharger and it, it does use a intercooler system, it does have a blow off valve in between shifts and whatnot. Now for you turbo guys, you guys know once you let off the throttle, vacuum increases in the manifold, the intercooler piping diverges all the way. Uh, the, the boost and the air that's going into the engine and you get a nice psh sound but that's where it stops right on this car that whoosh sound just keeps continuing it's just a loud whoosh 
and while you're decelerating, it's whooshing the whole time. Whoosh, very loud, crazy obnoxious. At first, it's pretty cool, but I can definitely see how this thing is going to get really obnoxious. And if you live in an area where police are always on the radar, you definitely do not want this because it was super freaking loud. Cool at first, like I said, interesting, but damn, way too loud. Other than that, the car did come with Handata. It was tuned. I'm not sure exactly the tuning parameters of it, but the owner said he did swap out a bigger throttle body on it from a J-Series, if I remember correctly, and he said it's not tuned properly for the J-Series. Uh, it, uh, it's not tuned properly for the J-Series throttle body. And again, if you're selling a car, at least sell it in a, a piece where you know it runs and drives pretty dang good and can idle. Whether it's an idle issue or it's a bigger issue, I'm not sure. Overall, the car had a bunch of leaks here and there. It did have uh, aftermarket uh, mounts all over. It had a solid torque mount. Car felt fine for the most part, but overall, the the price I believe was around eight eight and a half thousand. I was trying to get him down, roughly around seven and a half. I think he would let the car go, but at that point, considering what the car still needs. Um, it didn't really fit my needs, you know. The engine needed work, the interior probably was a smoker's vehicle, not the best. There was no boost gauges, no wideband gauges. So yeah, it could be tuned, but you don't really know exactly what's going on. You have to always look up on Handata and look at the, man, uh, the engine management to see whether what boosts you're running. Again, there's no wideband. You can't monitor those parameters readily. And it's just, you know, it just didn't fit the criteria. But the car moves. It was fun to feel that torque on a Honda and the low RPM band. So the supercharger definitely does its job and does a damn good job. And the fact that it fits conveniently in the engine bay and it retains a lot of the stock components is also very good. Oh, one thing I also forgot to mention, the hood actually was lifted. He, he said because the supercharger sits a little high, you have to tilt the hood open. So there's hood spacers again, which I did not like whatsoever because it's just not a sleeper anymore at this point. You know, you're kind of going into that riser boy territory. And that was my experience driving a Craftsworks supercharged Civic Asai. The car was pushing around 305 wheel horsepower according to the owner. Again, I don't know if it was dyno tune, whatnot. Seems like this guy, cool guy, automotive guy but he just had a lot of project on his hand he was also talking about uh, J swapped EG hatch that he's working on and something else and I think he was just trying to get rid of some cars to to help fuel the other builds again the car just didn't fit my appetite overall what I was looking for the fit and finish of stuff so we're gonna pass up on that deal boys and that's what we did and stay tuned for the next video because we also went to test drive another Civic Si and another supercharged Civic Si, but a completely different blower system. This one is a, again, um, what is it? This one's a road track. So it just works differently. And the one we went to test drive next on that future video is a root style supercharger, such as, you know, root style is a lot more, uh, root style has a lot more benefits in some ways. And we'll discuss those on the future videos. But don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you guys ever test drove supercharged cars. Are they reliable? What were your opinions of them? What goes wrong? Anyway, guys, I catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace. I ain't here for the money.